We've been looking at projectile motion when we take air resistance into account. And I wanna pick up from this moment in our working where you may recall, we took the particular result for uh, the second derivative of uh, vertical motion with respect to time, uh, given these particular restraints. And then we sort of did a bit of simplification with our particular value of G, particular value of K. Then we landed on this spot. And in our you know, work through the lesson, I said, this looks a whole lot like the same differential equation we had for horizontal motion. And that was an exponential decay situation, right? And from that, I drew this equation together. Um, it's exponential decay, just like you saw before, because you've got this exponential, that negative sign indicates decay rather than growth. But I said that the difference was as compared to horizontal motion. This 50 in here uh, introduced essentially a shift into our, um, our exponential decay situation. We're not moving towards zero anymore. We're going to be uh, changed by this offset of 50 units. Now, if you're like me, when you have a look at this move, um, this is certainly one of those what just happened moments, right? Um, it's one of those moments I actually find most frustrating when I'm reading a textbook and it kind of pulls this just trust me uh, move on you where it does not look immediately obvious unless you are much smarter than I am uh, to go from this first line here from the uh, differential equation which relates acceleration uh, vertically with uh, velocity vertically and then to pull this rabbit out of a hat. This is a, a time equation for velocity. How do we get to this? Can we actually show this from, from first principles? That's what I wanna show you now so that you don't just have to accept that this magically comes from this equation. I wanna show you um, exactly all of the moves, the calculus that we can use to actually show uh, why this result is the case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take us back a couple of steps. Go back to essentially uh, what we got here in the question with G and K being unspecified. Uh, I'm gonna show it, um, I think it's actually easier to do some of the numbers when you don't have so many uh, constants flying around. Um, and you can also see in some of our results where the gravity comes in, where the constant of proportionality ends up um, through our integration process. So we're gonna go from here. This is gonna be our um, starting point. And I'm gonna show you how you end up here and then you can sort of take it uh, from where we did it in the lesson. All right, so for starters, what do I want to uh, say out of this? Well, I need to get toward a time equation, right? So therefore, I'm going to rework this equation um, with the form of acceleration over here that includes time in it and also makes it easiest for me to use this y dot, this velocity, uh, vertical velocity um, term in here, right? Now, remembering that if I, I would normally say that, you know, if I had uh, acceleration in just like a normal straight line situation, I would normally write that as dv on dt, change in velocity over time. If all I had to worry about was a single direction, v for velocity is just fine, it's sufficient. But here in this projectile motion situation, because we're considering it two dimensionally, that's why we've got an x dot and a y dot. So here, rather than, you know, this um, being just vaguely acceleration, this is y double dot, and sort of carrying over here, it would not be dv on dt, it would be d vertical velocity over dt. So therefore, the way that I would write this, slightly awkward, um, but I think it's gonna be the uh, most succinct and also the least ambiguous way to describe what's going on. This is not dy, uh, sorry, dv on dt, it's dy dot on dt. So this is just my expression for vertical velocity. And then I have the rest of the differential equation on the right hand side, like so. Okay, so from here, uh, what do I wanna pull? Well, I'm gonna try and pull off this same kind of separation of variables trick that I've done uh, many times before because that will let me actually integrate. So um, I can see I've got my, um, I've got these terms over here and I want to divide through by those and then this dt is gonna end up on my, uh, you know, on the other side so that I can actually integrate successfully. So therefore what I'm gonna do is I think what might be easiest is to actually put this into a single fraction. So I'm gonna go negative one uh, outside of, I don't know, I'll put that over there in the middle. Negative one outside of g plus ky, like so. Uh, and the left-hand side hasn't changed. And what this enables me to do, <coughs> excuse me, is to take the reciprocal uh, and then I can integrate appropriately. So you can see if I go dt on dy dot here, that's gonna give me, uh, the reciprocal of negative one is just negative one, so I'll leave that up the top. 
And then I'm going to get my g plus ky dot on the denominator. And from here, uh, you can see I'm going to get a log on the right hand side once I integrate with respect to the correct variables. So what I'm going to do to make that a bit more obvious is say um, I'm going to put the uh, minus k uh, multiply through by that dt and that's going to give me a positive k on g plus ky dot with respect to y dot. So you can see what I've done there is I have uh, rearranged this dy dot has come over to the right hand side and in addition to that um, if I just highlight here I've multiplied through this negative one by negative k giving me k over here so that I have this f dash on f situation but of course you can't just multiply the you know the right hand side by negative k you've also got to multiply the left hand side by negative k. All right, so now this is ready to actually just integrate. I'm ready to go. So on the left hand side, this is going to be a linear function. So minus kt, because I'm integrating with respect to time, plus my constant, which I'm going to find out in a second. And then on the right hand side, I got this ready to go as a log and it's just g plus k y dot. I don't need another constant because I've got it captured all over here in my left hand constant. Okay, having integrated, I'm now going to use my initial conditions to evaluate this constant. And if I go back to this question, you can see I'm thinking about vertical motion at this point, And there, the j vector is going to be um, multiplied by 30. So there is my initial vertical velocity. It's going to be 30 meters per second, I guess, um, because I don't have any other units. I'm just going to assume meters per second uh, up in the vertical direction. So I can say initially, or you could have said um, time equals zero and the y dot, the vertical motion uh, velocity that I start with is going to be 30. So let's go ahead and just substitute that in. I'm going to get zero plus c on left hand side and then log of um, g plus, uh, this is where I've got my um, value of k here, which is actually, I might as well just put in at this point um, because this will let me simplify a little bit. Um, g is 10, as has been set in the question. I've got a k of a fifth and that's multiplied by the 30, which I was substituting in to here. There's that value there appearing all the way through. Okay, so from here you can see I've just got the constant on the left hand side and then I've got log of 10 plus a fifth of 30 last I checked was 6 so therefore I'm going to get 10 plus 6 which is 16 over there on the right hand side. Okay, so now I can um, substitute that back in. I can say therefore I'm going to put in, since I, I used it here to evaluate, I'm going to put in k and I'm going to put in c and I'm going to put in g. So what expression does that give me or equation rather? Uh, it looks to me like I'm going to get uh, minus a fifth of t plus my constant which is log of 16 is equal to log of 10 plus y dot all divided by 5. Okay, let's just have a look there. I've substituted in k, I've substituted in c, I've substituted in g. It's all looking good. And at this point, you remember where I'm headed towards is an equation for y dot. So I need to rearrange this quite substantially to try and show that. Um, what's the best way to do this? Well, um, for starters, what I'm going to do is I'll leave the... Um, yeah, I'll leave the left-hand side as it is for the briefest moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything in here onto a single denominator because, you know, it's two terms and it's going to make my log laws a bit easier to manipulate in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is equal to um, 50 plus y dot all divided by 5. And... Then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that log 16 from both sides. So that gives me minus t on 5 on the left hand side and then log of uh, this whole term here. And I'm going to subtract log 16. But remember, uh, log laws this is what I was saying before. When you subtract logs, what you're doing is you're dividing by the numbers that you're taking the log of. So in this case, it would be this inside part here divided by 16. So when you divide, that's going to change our denominator here, 50 plus y dot. That's all divided through by 5 times 16, which last I checked was 80. And I've got minus t on 5 on the left hand side. 
Okay, I'm almost there. Uh, you can see here that this, this ln is just log base e. So now I can rewrite this whole logarithmic equation as an exponential equation. So that's going to give me, I'm going to take this inside the log. That's going to become my new subject of the equation. And it's going to be e to the power of minus t on 5. Okay, fantastic. So from there, I can say that's going to be multiplied through by 80 e to the minus t on 5. That's 50 plus y dot on the left hand side and now I just need to subtract 50 and there it is. I've got my vertical velocity with respect to time and no hand waving required. You can see exactly where things came from. I did the integration. Um, you had to be fairly careful to get your log right and watch out for those minus signs. Uh, and then there's the results. So you can see if I compare this to the result that I kind of did uh, earlier on in our lesson, um, you can see there, it's the same exponential function, it's got that shift there, and then you just have to go and use the same kind of initial conditions that we did in this result to find out what your value of c is, which we already have determined is 80. So if this particular step here, it kind of fizzled your brain and you're like, but why is that the case? Well, now you have the why. Uh, this is doing it, sort of deriving that result from first principles. Um, and it's important you know why that is and how to be able to do this yourself because, uh, you know, it's often the case, number one, that you'll be required to show that. And number two, if you just can't remember that this just magically turns into this, you've got to be able to work your way out of it nonetheless. So I hope that working made sense to you. If it's unclear, um, just let me know. Happy to answer any questions.